the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial on using tables in Microsoft Word. Now tables play a big role when it comes to laying out a document. They allow you to present your data in columns and rows and make information look more organized and easier to read. And tables have their own contextual ribbon with many different options available to reorganize, modify and format the table to match the overall look and feel of any document. So in this tutorial, we're going to go through the process of inserting a table into our document. And then I'm going to show you some tips and tricks when it comes to formatting that table. So let's first deal with inserting a table into a blank document. Now, there are a few different ways that you can do this. So I'm going to show you a couple of them. The first way is to jump up to the insert ribbon. And you'll see that you have a group here called tables and there's only one option in there that is the table option and when you click on that drop down you essentially get this little grid so this allows you to select how many rows and how many columns you want in your table and you can see as i hover my mouse over this grid it's building the table live in my document so if i know for example that i want a table that is three columns by four rows I just need to select that many squares in the little grid and I click and there is my table now the other option that you have when it comes to inserting tables I'm just going to quickly delete this table out is again to jump up to that insert tab click the table drop down and instead of using the grid there is an insert table option and this is where you can go in and you can specify the number of columns and the number of rows that you want in your table. So I'm going to say that we're going to have four columns and we're going to have, let's say, 10 rows. And I then get a choice of the auto fit behavior. So, for example, here, fixed column width means that each column in the table will be the same width determined by Word. And I have this set to automatic, so it's going to do the best fit. Auto fit to contents means that each column will fit to the contents contained within the table. And finally, auto fit to window means that the columns will expand to be flush with the left and right margins. Now, I find that most of the time this fixed column width is absolutely fine for what I need to do, because if I do need to make any adjustments or changes to the width of the columns, I can do that after I've inserted the table. So I'm going to click on OK. And there we have my table. Now, another option that you have when it comes to inserting tables, and I'm just going to put this one underneath the first table, is we can draw our own table. And sometimes this is appropriate because it does give you a lot more control over how your table looks, such as determining the row height, the column width, and the overall table size. So if I jump up to the insert ribbon, go to the table drop down, there is an option in there for draw table. So let's turn this on and you'll see that my mouse pointer now turns into a little pencil icon. So this is going to allow me to draw my table. So I'm going to start with the outside border and I'm going to make it that big. And I can then take my pencil and I can draw in rows and columns. So this is a lot more flexible and gives me a little bit more control than some of the other options. So I'm just going to draw a few in there and I can draw some columns. like so. Now once you're finished drawing your table, you see that I still have that pencil icon. All I need to do is jump up to my ribbon and just deselect the draw table option. So once you have your table drawn or inserted, whichever method you've chosen, you'll then have access to the table tools contextual ribbon. So I'm going to do this on this top example here in this table. So I'm going to select the entire table. If you glance up to your ribbons, you'll see that now, because I have a table selected, I have access to the table design ribbon and the table layout ribbon. And between these two ribbons, you can pretty much control every aspect of your table. So let's start with the table design. So this is where I can go in to really control the formatting of my table. For example, in the middle here, I have some table styles that I can apply. 
and you'll see as I hover over, I get that live preview so I can see which one I want to use before I actually apply it. So it's a nice quick way of adding formatting. Now you can apply a table style and then you can modify different elements of the formatting. You're not just stuck with the color scheme that you have. So if I decide that I quite like this table style, but I want to change maybe the background shading of the header row, I can just select that header row, go up to shading, and I can choose a completely different color. Now I'm going to enter some text into here. So I'm going to click in this first cell. I'm going to type in the word North, press the tab key to move across to the next cell. Tab again, East, tab again, West. So tab in will allow you to move between your different cells in order to input any data. It's worth noting that if you are clicked in a cell, so I'm clicked in North, if I was to press enter, it's just gonna make that cell taller. It's not gonna move me down to the next row. To do that, I would either need to click with my mouse in the cell below, or alternatively, I can use my down arrow to move to that cell. I can also make adjustments to the width of these columns simply by hovering my mouse over the column border and dragging out or in. And I could do the same for the rows. I can drag them up and I can drag them down. So I've gone ahead and I've added some data into the top half of this table. Now a few other things that I can do here with formatting, again, I have some table style options. So currently you can see that I have banded rows turned on, which is giving me these alternate blue and white colors in this table. If I turn those off, it removes them. I could choose to have banded columns instead. I could choose to format the last column. So you can see now it's made all of those numbers in bold, or I could even add a total row, a header row or a first column. I could also add some interest to my table by adding borders. So currently I have very pale borders running through my table, but if I wanted to, I can select my table and I have this borders group up here. So what I might want to do is give it a reasonably thick border. So I'm going to select a solid line. I'm going to make the border a bit thicker. So two and a quarter points. And I'm going to make that border a completely different color. So let's do a bright green. And then I can choose what kind of border I want. And again, if I hover over these different options, you can see how they apply. So for example, left border is going to give me that green left border. I can do all borders to put a border around everything. Or alternatively, I could just do an outside border or an inside border. So in this case, I'm going to do an outside border. I'm then going to change the width of my pen. So I'm going to take that down to one and a half points. I'm going to change the pen color to a blue color. And this time I'm going to select inside borders like so. So lots of different styling options available for you on the table design ribbon. Now, the other ribbon that we have here is the layout ribbon. And this is where you can do things like insert rows, insert columns, merge cells, split cells, change the text direction, and also the alignment of your text within your cells. So let's take a look at some of these basic things. If you want to add a new row in, so if I want a new row in between this row that I've got highlighted and the one below, all I need to do is highlight the row. Then on the layout ribbon, you can see in the rows and columns group, I have the option to insert a new row above where I'm clicked or below like so. And the same thing works for columns. So I could highlight the east column and choose if I want to insert a blank column to the left or to the right. Another quick way of adding a row is if you click just outside the table. So in the west column where we have 49, I'm going to click my cursor just outside of the table. And if I press the enter key, it's going to give me a brand new row. Similarly, if I want to delete anything, so if I want to delete these two blank rows that I've put in, I can highlight them. And in the rows and columns group, I have a delete option and I can say delete rows. 
I'm going to do the same for these blank rows at the bottom, but this time I'm going to right click my mouse and you'll see that I also have an option in the right click menu for deleting rows. Now, one thing that I am going to do here, I'm going to add another blank row on the bottom. So I'm going to click outside of the last row and I'm going to press enter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a formula which is going to add up all of the numbers above. So if you jump to the layout ribbon, you'll see in the data group, you actually have the option to add a formula into your word table. And Word's pretty clever. What it's done here is it's recognized that I have numbers above where I'm clicked and it's entered the formula for me. So it's saying equals sum and then in brackets, it says above. Now there are about 18 different functions that you can use in formulas in Word and you can see all of them listed in this paste function drop down. So if instead of doing a sum, I wanted to do an average calculation, I could select that from there instead and use above, below, left or right, depending on where my numbers are. Now in this case, I'm fairly happy just to do the sum of above, click OK, and it puts that sum in. So this time I'm going to do a formula that's going to work out the average of the numbers above. So all I need to do is delete out the sum function and I'm going to select average. And this time I'm just going to type in above, click on OK, and I'm now getting the average. Another thing I might want to do to make this table look a bit nicer is I might want to align all of my numbers to the center. So again, I'm going to highlight everything in this table. And then in the alignment group, I have lots of options in here when it comes to aligning my items within the cell. And I'm going to select align center to put those all in the center. Now, don't forget also that you can delete tables. So for example, this table that I've drawn underneath is no longer needed. And you'll see in the top left hand corner, I have this little crosshair. If I click on that crosshair, it's going to allow me to very quickly select the entire table. Now, if I want to delete this, I can right click and I have a delete table option in the right click menu. Alternatively, on the layout ribbon, I have a delete table option. Now, another thing that you might find yourself wanting to do is converting tables to regular text. So I might want to remove these numbers and these headings from the table and just have them as regular text on my page. And again, Word has a handy little button that's going to help you to do this. I'm going to select my table. Up on the layout ribbon in the data group at the end, we have a button that says convert to text. Now, when you click that, it's going to ask you, how do you want these fields to be divided up? So when it takes it out of the table, there's no longer going to be columns and rows in order to separate these values. So Word is asking you, how do you want to separate the text with paragraph marks, with tabs, with commas or with something else? Now, in this case, I'm going to utilize tabs, click on OK. And you can see that the data is now out of the table and everything is separated by a tab. And if I wanted to put this back in a table, I can highlight this data. I can go to the insert ribbon. I can jump down to tables and you can see here I have an option convert text to table. Words picked up that I have four columns and the number of rows is six. Click on OK and I'm back in my table structure. Now the final thing I want to show you with tables is just how to split and merge cells. So for example, if I decide that I want to split this north cell into two cells, I can do that simply by clicking within the cell, jumping up to the layout ribbon and in the merge group, I have a split cells option. And it's going to ask me, how many columns do I want to split this cell into? Now, I'm just going to split it into two, but you could definitely do three or four as long as you have enough space in there. So I'm going to say split into two columns, click on OK, and you can now see I've split that cell. The reverse of that is merging columns. So again, if I wanted to merge these back into one cell, I would need to select both of the cells jump up to layout 
and choose the Merge Cells option to put that back to one cell. So as you can see, there are plenty of options when it comes to formatting your tables, and there's definitely more than what I've shown you here. But hopefully that will get you started, get you interested. So my recommendation is that you insert a table into a document and just have a play around with it and see all of the things that you can do with tables. That's it for this video tutorial. I hope you found it useful and I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.